Welcome everybody, I am a Grandmaster Anna Muzuchuk here with Chess.com covering the game of the day. This one is between William Alfaro with white pieces and Luis Fernando Ibarra Chami with black played at the FIDE Online Olympiad. As we can see, it's not a game between the top players, but in this game the player rated a bit over 2100 managed to beat a Grandmaster in quite a convincing way. Let's see how it happened. So e4, c5, d4. It's not the most popular way to meet the Sicilian, but this line is not without the venom. c takes d4, and now not queen takes d4 as after knight c6, white will have to make one more move with the queen, which will just lead to losing some important tempest in the opening, but instead white played c3. This line is called Mora Gambit. And to be honest, I liked it very much and I used it many times in my own games when I was a kid. Here black took on c3. I have to mention that black wasn't obliged to take the pawn and two other reasonable alternatives are knight f6 and d5. But of course there is nothing wrong with taking the pawn on c3, so d takes c3 was played. Knight takes c3. And let's stop here for a while trying to realize what kind of compensation white has for a sacrifice pawn. And the compensation is that white already has an advantage in the development. White has a better control over the central squares and the diagonals for the bishops are already opened. So it's quite obvious that white had the right to sacrifice the pawn, but of course on the other hand the pawn is still a pawn. So e6 was played, but before we proceed with the game, I'd like to show you some hilarious lines and actually the reason why I liked myself uh, to play this line with white many years ago. In some of my games my opponent played knight c6, what looks very normal. I played knight f3 and now black saw that knight f6 may be made by e5. So they were trying to prepare the move knight f6 by starting with d6. I played bishop c4 and now it looks like knight f6 is finally possible, but there is a trick starting with e5. After e5 I would say that white's initiative is already huge, but some of my games were ended just in a few moves with knight takes e5, knight e5, d takes e5, bishop f7, winning the queen. I was very happy when I was winning the games in such a way, but maybe after watching this video you will also try this line in your own games and trick your opponent right in the open, opening. Uh, just try it! Uh, let's go back to the game where first move e6 was played. Knight f3, a6, bishop c4. Why is just developing the pieces? And here black played the move which I don't like much. It's queen c7. Queen c7 is a typical move in uh, many of the lines of the Sicilian, but in this position there is the difference. And the difference is that uh, white has no pawn on c2. And that means that after developing the dark squared bishop, uh, white will later on play rook c1. And after that, the queen on c7 uh, will be staying, uh, well, not under the discovered check, but I would say under the discovered attack. So after queen c7, white simply retreated the bishop to b3, bishop b3 was played. Knight c6, castling short, bishop d6. And in this position, white uh, played the move that actually surprised me a lot. It was queen d2. At first sight it looks quite strange to play queen d2 when the bishop is still on c1. But queen d2 has quite a deep idea behind it. On the next move white is planning to play rook d1 hitting on the bishop on d6 and uh, with a temple. So knight g7 was played, rook d1, now the bishop has to move again, bishop b4, and now white starts to develop the initiative by playing queen g5, attacking the g7 pawn. 
Knight g6, bishop e3, castle in short, rook a c1. At, at this moment, we can already say that white fully completed the development while some of black black's pieces are still staying on the starting position. Just look at the bishop on c8 and the rook on a8. And uh, you remember that a few minutes ago I was uh, mentioning and I was talking about the queen on c7, right? I will just add that now the idea of knight d5, e takes d5, e takes d5 is in the air and uh, perhaps that's why black didn't want to keep the queen on c7 anymore and queen a5 was played offering a queen trade. But of course when you have initiative you should keep the pieces on the board and that's that's why white's reply was queen g3. And here black made quite a serious mistake by playing queen h5. I think the reason why black played queen h5 is that they wanted to play b5 on the next move. Uh, b5 right here uh, had one serious problem as uh, white had a very unpleasant reply which is h4. And uh, somehow there is no good defense against the h5 h6 threat. To be honest, I was a bit shocked when I saw computer's evaluation at this po point as after h4, Angel's evaluation was something like plus 5, what means a decisive advantage for black. For white, sorry. Uh, therefore, bishop e7 was the best move in this position for black, but let's go back to the game and see why queen h5 was actually wrong. Uh, which move do you think was played here? Yes, it's knight d5. E takes d5. Uh, I may understand why black didn't want to play bishop a5 in this position. And the reason is that after knight b6, bishop b6, bishop b6, uh, white has a full domination over the board, but the move chosen in the game is even worse. Black took on d5. Rook takes d5 and uh, now there is no place for black's queen to escape so black has to give the knight back. Knight c5 was played, knight takes e5, knight takes e5, rook e5, queen e2 and now white start the mating attack. Rook g5, queen takes b2, e5, very strong move covering this diagonal and now the pawn on g7 is unprotected again. g6 and now the final blow. Rook takes g6, a takes g6, queen takes g6, king h8, queen h6, king g8, bishop c2 threatening the mate. f5. Uh, in case of a rook e8 or a rook d8, uh, white could reach the target by playing bishop h7, king h8, bishop g6, king g8, queen h7, king f8, queen f7 mate. So f5 was played, but now the pawn on f7 is not covering this diagonal anymore. That's why white moves bishop b3. And in case of rook f7, white is winning by queen g6. That's why black preferred to give the queen by playing queen b3 but that's also quite hopeless and after queen g6 check king h8 a takes b3 black resigned i hope you liked this video and by watching this video you learned some new ideas uh, like the video if you enjoyed it and drop a comment to let me know about your thoughts well see you soon on the next videos